Hey folks, Sanity here and welcome back to another TOS video. Today's video is going to be about a solo version of Hard Morning Ponya, which has been added to the games on November 16, 17 update. Anyway, what you just saw is a stage selection between 1 to 5, 1 as being the lowest and 5 as being the hardest and the highest. Each stage has different mechanics but the best hostile payout for the run is going to be stage 5, which is pretty easy if you have a lot of experience for Morning Ponya Legend Raid. Anyway, so the first mechanic that you need to be aware of is the Purification Stone. There will be a stone in the meadows with a maximum of 35 stack and your character can refuel the stone with a poison immunity stack by standing in the meadows. However, if your character refuel the Purification Stone at 20 mark, it will completely refuel the stone, which is pretty convenient because you will get 99 poison stack upon entering Morning Pony at stage. Moving on to the first mechanics of the stage, it's going to be summon give us at 94.99%. Morning Ponya will summon a giant portal that release a giant mushroom that will follow your character. These guys are all pretty annoying by the way because after you killing it, it will summon a mini give us. Now killing this guy will explode a poison effect which reduces your poison in the immediate stack so you definitely want to avoid that as much as possible. On to the second mechanic and that is blinds at 92.99%. Morning Ponya will blind your character and summon a red portal at a known location. And the plant monster will spawn from the portals if your character touched the portals. Make sure you have enough skill to burst down the monster because this monster have a lot of critical resistance. If you fail to kill the monster, the monster will explode, dealing a lot of damage and take away some of your poison immunity stack. The next mechanic is going to be very tricky depending on your classes. It's going to be swap and race at 89.99%. Morning Ponya will swap the character into the meadows and stone your character. After stone effects, the Morning Ponya will slap your character, deal a lot of damage and take away a chunk of your poison immunity stack. Now the race mechanic will follow after that and if you fail the first one, you are going to fail the race mechanic as well so keep that in mind. Now what you see here is actually my saddles. My saddle managed to dodge the swap mechanic because I'm using Baktiki to push my characters from being swapped into the meadows. It's very convenient if you're using classes that have a lot of mobilities. If not, you're kinda screwed to deal with these mechanics. The third mechanic is going to be Curse at 84.99%. Morning Ponya will play a curse on your character and the Curse Magic Circle will swing over time until it fades away. Do not walk outside of the Magic Circle or your character will take a lot of damage and take away a bit of your Poison Immunity stack. The curse magic will not spawn after a few seconds, so you have time to position yourselves where you want the curse to spawn. The next mechanic is going to be Watch and Tantalizer at 79.99%. Morning Ponya will cast a Watch on your character and the Tantalizer will spawn to fight along with the boss. Clear out the Watch mechanic first by running to the wall. Make sure you watch out for the Morning Ponya stun attack because if you get hit by it, your character is guaranteed to die by Morning Ponya rush attack. I do want to point out that the watch mechanic is going to happen every 75 seconds which is 1 minute and 15 seconds. Make sure you have a timer for that otherwise you are going to deal with some crazy mechanic later on into the game. There is one more mechanic that you need to watch out for and that is magic condensation from tantalizer. Your character will get a 5 second timer and it will spawn a magnetic field that is damaged over time. This thing lasts almost forever by the way so make sure you spawn it right next to the wall. Otherwise, it's going to be super painful when you're dealing with all the mechanic later into the fight. There's one more attack that you need to worry about and that is Tantalizer Ultimate. Tantalizer will gather up all the black energy ore and release a powerful magnetic attack if he has 15 stack. Make sure your catcher has enough skill available to kill all this ore to prevent Tantalizer to get any stack and releasing the ultimate attack. Otherwise, you will lose a lot of poison immediately stack to deal with all the mechanics later on. Additionally, Morning Ponya will receive a buff that protects her from taking damage or reduce damage taken until Tantalizer HP drop below 70%. This mechanic is similar to Hard Morning Ponya Party version where you have to drop Tantalizer HP down to 70% along with Morning Ponya. After dropping Tantalizer HP down to 70%, he will fly away and you are going to fight Morning Ponya by yourself again. The next mechanic is going to be blind. Morning Ponya will blind your character and you have to find the red portal at a known location. Make sure to keep track of the watch mechanic and storm attack because these two can easily mess up your timing while killing the plant monster. Additionally, I recommend watch out for the watch mechanic first before CT8.99% for the blind mechanics. Otherwise, you are going to deal with the plant monster under the watch mechanics. 
After dropping Moriponia HP down to 64.99%, Tantalizer will reunite with Moriponia for the second time, and you are going to drop Moriponia HP down to 54% and Tantalizer HP down to 41%. The boss fight is still the same as the first encounter, so make sure you save enough skill or your strongest skill to deal with the Black Orb. Now, the reason why you want to keep Moriponia HP as high as 54% is because the next mechanic is going to be cursed at 52.99%. Moriponia will play a curse on your character and the curse magic circle will screen over time until they fade away. By walking outside of the magic circle, your character will take a lot of damage and it'll also take away a bit of your opponent's immediate stack. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that you need to do the watch mechanic first before doing the curse mechanic. Otherwise, the curse mechanics will overlap with the watch mechanic and you are going to take a lot of damage inside the curse circle along with the watch. I also want to point out that the race mechanic is going to happen at the same time with the curse mechanics. So what you want to do is actually move the curse mechanic, go straight into the middle, so the platform race is going to happen to be there as well. Now, if you don't get the race platform, just go ahead, just take the race platform instead of the curse mechanics. This is going to be fine as long as you get raised and stay inside the circle. Third time the charm, you are going to fight Tantalizer at 49.99%. Now, Tantalizer will come back again for the last time to help Moriponia. You are going to kill Tantalizer at the stage of the game. All the mechanics are the same, except that you don't have to deal with the rush mechanic anymore between 50% HP all the way down to 20% HP threshold. Make sure to keep Moriponia HP as high as 31% by the way, because the next mechanic is going to be very, very important. Once you drop Moriponia HP down to 29.99%, Moriponia will start using the stun attack in her normal rotation. Watch out for her patterns and avoid the stun as much as possible, otherwise you will get one shot by her drive attack. Once again, at 27.99%, Moriponia will swap the character into the middle and stone your character. After the stone effect, Moriponia will slap the character in dealing a lot of damage but also take away a chunk of your poison immunity stack. Raise mechanic will follow after that and if you fail the swap mechanic, you will fail the raise as well. Going into the worst mechanics of the fight and that is the purification stone removal at 19.99%. Moriponia will remove the Purification Stone in the middle at the stage of the game and reduce your Poison Immunity stack over time. If you had a lot of stack by avoiding all the mechanics in the early game, then you should be fine. Otherwise, it will be a damage rate at this point of the game. Also, she is going to use Watch again at 20%, so keep that in mind. On to the next mechanic, this one is actually pretty easy and it's going to be Swap and Blinds at 9.99%. Flying and swap mechanics are going to happen at the same time. You are going to deal with the swap mechanic first and then deal with the plant monster from the blind effect. Now, you should have enough time to kill the plant monster as long as you haven't touched the red portal yet. If you happen to touch the red portal during the swap effects, this might be hard. The last mechanic is going to be Curse and Race at 8.99%. Morning Point now will play as Curse on your catcher and the Curse Magic Circle will string over time until it fades away. Once again, do not walk out of the Curse Magic Circle or your catcher will take a lot of damage and take away a bit of your Poison Immunity stack. I think at this point it doesn't matter because you already lose a lot of Poison Immunity stack. Also, watch out for Race. Once you clear the mechanic, the rest of the fight is pretty easy except for the stun. If you get hit by the stun, you are guaranteed to die right away regardless of how much HP you have. Now I do want to point out that the stun mechanic is the hardest mechanic in my opinion if your class doesn't have a lot of mobility, otherwise it should be easy. At this point, Morning Pointer is dead and you're good to go, so go ahead and grab the desk, grab the reward, maybe, and hopefully you get an arch stone from the solo versions of Heart Morning Pointer. Anyway, the next clip is going to be my equipment and what did I use for the raid. Alright, we're back. So onto the equipment, it's going to be full attack and set effects from the 4 piece of armor along with the trinket. My weapon is going to be plus 16 this nice 7 0s 2 inmates, which is really good with 2 offsetting status. Now, what I do recommend is actually drop one of the offsetting status to get accuracy. I noticed that I missed a lot of attack during the tantalizer and morning pony fight, so that is really bad by the way. I also removed my Vivora Trinket to replace with Declaration Trinket for the extra crit rate, which is super super nice for 12% by the way. So if you have a lot of flat crit rate, this one is actually really really good. The right retribution art for burst damage. For my anchor on my equipment is going to be intelligent, con, SPR, and crit rates, along with the overload rate anchor for all four pieces. This is super super good. The overload rate anchor is gonna help me boost the damage for the 4% damage cap. Now, accessory 2 Caroline trigger set effects for the bracelets. We're now, more important trigger set necklace. I'm still working on the necklace, I'm just missing out the art stone at the moment. Plus 3 birds of steel, and the reds is pretty straightforward for the cosmetics. Look at that, it's beautiful. 
All right, so onto the car, the car option. You have a lot of options for the car, by the way. The blue one, I went for Zara car because I don't want to deal with these physical attack or basic attack from Tantalizer. That thing does so much damage. For the green car, it's going to be Lucia for the extra intelligence for the raw damage. Now, for the legend car, Demon Lord Monarch is always good to do with the plant monster in my opinion, but you can always go for the unscaled eclipse car for the extra insect damage. That's what is really good as well. For the red card, it's going to be Chaffer card for insect damage. For the purple card, two may call for the extra crit rate and one for Gazing Golem. There is actually one more card and that is Mamillo card. Let me go ahead and head out right away to show you guys from the Mercenary Bash Shop because that one is so important when it comes to catch your budget and investment. The Mamillo card is coming out from the Mercenary Bash Shop and this card is so good. Let me show you guys real quick. Alright, so this is the Mamillo card. This one decreases the damage received from the boss by 4% per card, that's 12% in total. Someone told me it's actually calculating final damage, but I think that's not necessarily the case because the damage reduction coming out of the boss applies for physical and magic defense as well. If you notice that Morimponia and Tantalizer has the burst ability, the purple orb coming out from Morimponia does a lot of damage, and in Tantalizer, the Wing Slash does so much damage, it does almost like 30,000, 40,000 almost all the time. So with this car, you are going to have good times against Morimponia and Tantalizer in the hard mode solo version. Alright, so onto the Assister. For the Assister, it's going to be Morimponia's Mod so called Emirtus. This one is all the way for my builds. Extra crit rate, extra intelligence, extra SPR, extra magic critical damage for attack and set effect, and crit damage bonuses. Super, super good. Three extra area attack ratio to deal with all the small monsters as well as the black energy orbs. Super, super good. Now, for my skill builds, it's going to be very straightforward. Max out heal, max out guardian saying, max out fakes. I stopped using care because I never used it to be honest. Everything is maxed out at level 100 attribute. Exorcist, Max has Rubik's, one point in twos, I believe it's in Angotia and Antony's, Max out Gagarace, Max out Katikazor for extra AoE damage, and the rest go into Aqua Benedict's, Crusaders, pretty straightforward, Max out Chance, Max out Sacred, Max out Condense, Max out Retaliation, by the way, I'm actually maxing this out because it offers so much burst damage, Max out Protection of the Goddess, along with that Dispersion Arch, which is really good for my Crusader, and the rest of the point going into the Holy Smash, it's not a lot of damage, but it's definitely doable for my character, this way, Retaliation is the best way to go to deal with the Black Orbs when you're fighting Tantalizer to Ultimate, Sadus, all the way with Astral Body's Motions, Vashitas, Pranas, 1.2 Procession to reset these out of body, and the rest of the skill go into out of body, and comments, pretty straightforward, I got nothing else. Anyway, that is pretty much for this video. Thank you very much for watching. This is Sadushi once again, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.